Hi, my name is Barbara McGowan, and I work for the Biomedical Communications Department, which is part of our Marketing and Communications Office here at the School of Medicine and Health Sciences. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, how to design an effective poster using PowerPoint. Uh, the first thing I want to mention is that if you did your research at Children's National, um, you have to use their templates when preparing your poster. Um, their templates are available on either the Children's Internet or through Children's uh, PR and Marketing Office, and you can contact them if you need to use one of their templates. So the first piece of advice I have for you is don't wait until the last minute. There is really a lot that goes into designing a poster. Um, you need to collect all of your data. Uh, you need to have time to lay it out. You need to have time to proof it. And then, of course, you need to allow time um, for the printer to get it printed. So be sure that you don't wait until the last minute to begin. So things to do before you start. Uh, make some plans. Plan for uh, what size your poster needs to be, what colors you're going to use, what font you're going to use, um, collect all of your content. Uh, are you going to use graphs, charts, and photographs? Uh, you need to get all of those together uh, and, and um, jury those down to decide uh, what you're going to put in your poster. So be sure to make a plan uh, before you start working. Next, check the conference guidelines. Every conference including our research day here at GW, has guidelines for um, posters. And they're going to tell you uh, how much space they're giving you to hang your poster. Sometimes they tell you exactly what size your poster needs to be. Um, they'll tell you if they're going to give you, uh, provide you with push pins and, or Velcro or materials to hang your poster or if you have to bring your own. So um, make sure that you check those guidelines. Uh, so that you don't arrive at your conference and um, be f find out that you're unable to um, hang your poster uh, because you didn't uh, follow the guidelines. Um, now, f regarding research day here at GW, uh, your poster um, can't be bigger than a 4x4. Four four. So you can do any size that you want as long as it's not larger than a 4x4. Four four. And we'll talk about uh, sizing um, later. But uh, here's an example. You don't want to be the person who shows up at a conference with a poster that looks like that. Uh, this person was given this entire board to display their poster, and they came in with a poster that is uh, about two feet by three feet, uh, hung it up, and then they disappeared. Um, I literally, I saw this poster at GW's research day several years ago. It was actually there. There was no one there to talk to about it, uh, and so if you are the person who hangs a poster that looks like this, I can promise you that nobody is going to stop to, uh, to look at it. Um, so make sure that you check the guidelines and make a poster that's appropriately sized so that you appear professional and make sure that you're there to discuss your research with anyone who wants to stop by. So um, for our purposes uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, PowerPoint 2016. That's the version that is currently uh, on GW's network. So um, other versions of PowerPoint will look similar, and you may have to poke around a little bit to find what you're looking for. But uh, for our purposes today, we're using PowerPoint 2016. So this is how you're going to um, size your poster. Um, and I'm going to show you what each what these things look like um, after this. But first, for to begin, you're going to open PowerPoint. Um, usually, it's going to open up to a blank slide automatically for you. If it doesn't, then you can go up to File, select New, and then click on Blank Presentation. And then you'll have your, your blank slide in front of you. Then you need to size it. So you're going to go up to the top to the Design tab. And then you'll go to the far right of that uh, toolbox there, that toolbar at the top, and select Slide Size. Um, once you have selected Slide Size, you'll choose, in, it's a little drop-down menu, and you'll choose Custom Slide Size at the bottom. And then um, there's going to be um, a drop-down menu, and you can change the drop-down menu to Custom. Once you do that, uh, you'll see a box that will allow you to fill in the size of your poster. Now, if your poster is going to be a 36 by 48 or smaller, then you can make it 
exactly the size so you can make it 100% of what its final size is going to be. But PowerPoint will only let you make posters up to a certain size. And so once you cross over that size, um, it won't let you set it uh, for that size. So you want to make it, if it's going to be larger than 36 by 48, make it half of the final size you want it to be. And then when you uh, take it to be printed, you need to tell the printer that you want it to be printed at 200%, and that way it will come out to the proper size. So here, if your poster, you could have made your 36 by 48, um, 18 by 24, and you would tell the printer to make it printed at 200%, it will come out to be a 36 by 48. And then you're going to see a dialog box uh, where you're going to in select Ensure Fit. And I'll show you what that looks like. This is um, new in this updated version of PowerPoint. So, uh, so here you can see that up at the top, uh, we've gone to the Design tab. And then way over to the far right on that top toolbar, you'll see Slide Size. Uh, we, we chose um, Custom Slide and then the dialog box that's popped up in the middle. Uh, we've uh, changed at the top in the drop-down menu to custom. You have lots of size choices there, so we've changed it to custom. And then we set the width for 48 inches and the height for 36. And then once you hit OK, you're going to see this uh, dialog box pop up. Um, and you want to choose Ensure Fit. You want everything to be scaled to fit into your slide. Once you do that, and watch if you watch the uh, the white uh, background there, the blank uh, slide in the background. Once you click on Ensure Fit, it's going to uh, change you to your 48 by 36 uh, size, and then you're ready to begin. So uh, now we want to talk about color, selecting colors. Um, we want to make sure that the colors you choose are visually pleasing. Um, of course, the problem is that color is subjective. One person's beautiful color is another person's nightmare. So um, try to stick to colors that are, are basic and uh, easy for people to look at. Uh, we always recommend that you avoid red or green. Um, there are people who don't see color uh, for one thing, and so they'll have a hard time uh, looking at your poster. Um, and additionally, um, colors like red and green, uh, if you look at them, especially in particular if you use them for your font, uh, if you look at them for any length of time, they sort of start to appear as if they're swimming and moving and vibrating in front of you. And it's very hard to read red and green uh, on, a, on a poster. Um, the main thing is that you want to create contrast. So make sure you've got a background and a font that is going to create contrast between the two so that your, your text shows up on whatever background it is that you decide to use. In terms of selecting colors, um, what you see on your monitor does not always and most often doesn't print the same color. So whatever color you think it might be on your monitor, it's likely to come out somewhat different when you're actually printed. Um, GW's colors, if you decide that you'd like to use those, are based on a Pantone color palette. Um, and you can adjust the colors in PowerPoint so that you can be sure you get exactly the color that you've chosen. So um, here I've given you a chart uh, with uh, the main uh, colors of GW's color palette. And each one has the red, green, and blue values that, um, that make up that color listed here for you. And so what you can do is you right click on your background um, and then the format background menu now is going to appear to the far right side of the screen. Once you see that, you select the color drop down and then you choose more colors and you change that to custom and then you'll see where you can type in the color values. And I'll show you what that looks like. Um, here we've right clicked on our background and at the very bottom we choose format background and then you can see the format background uh, menu on the far right hand side. We scrolled down until we saw color, chose the drop down menu and at the very bottom there you'll see where it says more colors and once you click on that um, up pops this dialog box where you choose the custom tab and you can see at the bottom where it says red, green, and blue. And I have typed in the values uh, for the blue, GW blue background. And then that appears. And once you select that, you're set with your color. 
In terms of choosing a font, um, you want to choose a standard font, something like Arial, something that's easy to read. Uh, if you choose uh, some kind of a, 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 a scripty font like the one that I'm showing you here as a sample, um, that is going to be very, very difficult as people are trying to read your poster, in particular if you have a lot of text. It's going to be hard to read, so you want to choose a standard font that's easy to read. We recommend that you use title case for your title. So that's where you capitalize the first letter of each word in your title. Um, that tends to make uh, titles easier to read than making them all caps. Um, recommendations for font size, and these are just starting points, but your title font should be approximately 96 point font size. Then you make your author's text half the size of your title text. Your section headers, you can make the same size as your author's text. And then for the body of your uh, poster, um, you want to make that approximately two-thirds the size of the text of your section headers. The most important thing to note is that it's going to look proportional on your screen. So when you're looking at it, um, as long as it looks and fits proportionally, then you should be in good shape. And as you type and put more information into the poster, you may find that you need to adjust the font size to make it fit, and you can do that. But these are just these are starting points. So here you can see where my, this is what it looks like with my title at a font size of 96 points. Um, it's not a long title, so it all fits on one line. So you know, I think that that's pretty um, pretty easy to see. The um, the titles, the authors, and my uh, the university um, lines are 48 points. Uh, I made my headers also 48 points, and then of course at two thirds the size of 48, my font size in the body of my text um, is going to be 32 points, and uh, and it looks fairly proportional. So I think that I'm ready to go. In terms of content, I'm not going to speak a lot about content, but um, having been uh, looking at posters uh, for uh, 35 years, um, most po you, you need some combination uh, of this list in your poster. So you've, you've got to have a title. Uh, you can put an introduction if you like. You could use an abst your abstract if you want to put that in there. Uh, you'll need to uh, have materials and methods section, show how you did your research. Uh, of course, you want to uh, display your results. And you may want to have additional discussion. And then, of course, acknowledgments. You need to um, acknowledge anyone who, uh, whose help you used for your research. Uh, you want to acknowledge them in your poster. Um, the most important thing here is that you're trying to communicate your research and generate conversation with people. So your abstract and your conclusions are what's going to draw people in. They're going to look at what your research was, what your conclusions were, and then they're going to decide if they want to stay and find out how you got there and, and, uh, and what your research was all about and to talk, to, uh, talk with you. Um, so avoid too much text um, and, of course, avoid too little text. Um, if too much text, people are not going to stick around. There are a lot of posters. Uh, our research day, there's going to be well over 200 posters in the room, and people have, you know, an hour, maybe an hour and a half, and so they're going to spend a few minutes on each poster. If you've got too much text, too much to read, they're not going to take their time to stop and, uh, and look at your research. Um, and most importantly, make sure that you proof your poster, and this means not just that you proof it yourself, uh, ask someone else to read it for you. Have your friends read it, um, have your mentor read it, uh, whoever, you, whoever you can get to read the text and look for typos. Once you've looked at this material so many times, you're going to miss typos. And so it's very important that you ask someone else to read it with fresh eyes so that you don't go up there uh, with a big fat typo in your, uh, in your title on your poster. In terms of graphs, charts, and photographs, pictures are still worth a thousand words. You can really cut down on uh, the number, the amount of text that you need in your poster if you've got a good image to illustrate it. And then you could simply put a figure uh, uh, caption under it, and you're good to go. When using images, make sure that your images are uh, at least 300 DPI. Uh, TIFF files or JPEG files work fine. 
um, and remember not to take images from the web. The resolution on web images is too low and additionally it's illegal to uh, take images from the web and use them. Um, if you find an image on the web that you want to use then you can we are welcome to contact the owner uh, and ask for permission to use it and if permission is granted you can ask them if they can provide you with a higher resolution uh, image and it they may very well do that but do not take images from the web here's an example photo micrograph you see on the left nobody's going to get any information out of that at all the resolution is too low it's blurry um, <clears throat> the image on the right however nice and sharp uh, everybody is going to be able to see the point that you're trying to illustrate in terms of how to tell once you insert an image into your poster how it's going to print here's a tip so if you click once on the image to highlight it and then you go up to the top of the screen to view uh, go to zoom a hundred percent and click OK that will enlarge your image to a hundred percent of its final size and if it looks sharp to you then it's going to print great if it's not sharp it's not going to look good in your final image and in your final poster and you should go back and uh, and try to find a higher resolution image so here you can see in the center column there um, I believe figure two um, I have uh, highlighted the image and then uh, up at the top uh, I've gone to view and I've clicked on zoom and then the little dialog box appears I'm going to select 100% and click OK at the bottom and this enlarges my image for me and there I can see yes it looks great I'm good with that and that's going to look good in my final poster same thing here okay um, logos um, we need to make sure that you use the proper GW logos make sure that they're properly displayed you can download the logos from GW Creative Services website and here is the link to go there. Um, please do not copy logos from websites. The resolution is going to be too low. Once you are there uh, and you go to download your uh, logos, select the EPS files when you're downloading them. Those are the, the high resolution files. Make sure that you're using current logos and those are the logos that you'll find on the Creative Services website. Um, do not use old Medical Center logos. Um, Additionally, you'll find everyone Everyone always wants to use the, the logo that has the George Washington portrait attached to it. Unfortunately, that is not approved for posters. Um, that logo is reserved for institutional uh, materials only. So you won't find it available for download on the uh, Creative Services website, and that is the reason why. So um, you can't use, the unfortunately, uh, the logo with the George portrait. Make sure that you use the proper name for this institution. We are called the George Washington University, or you could also use the George Washington University School of Medicine and Health Sciences. If you're abbreviating the university, always abbreviate it as GW, never GWU. Okay, so here we have an example of a logo that is not acceptable. This logo was, not only is it very ugly, uh, it was designed um, by someone on their own, and you cannot display that on a poster. The logo on the right-hand side is the current GW logo, and that's the one you want to use. You'll notice that this is in reverse form. Um, it, the text is white uh, instead of blue, so that it shows up on the darker background. And uh, I'll talk more about that. Um, we can provide that logo uh, for you if you, uh, if you have a dark background on your poster. So use of logos. The top two logos are properly displayed. Okay. If you look at the improperly displayed logos below it, um, you'll see that the logos should never be displayed on uh, in a white box. And uh, this is part of the guidelines for usage of the logo. When when you go to the Creative Services website to download the logos, um, there is also a, a style guide that uh, has a whole list of um, the ways that you can and cannot use the logos. And uh, one of those rules is that you cannot display the logo on a white box like this. Now, we have in our office, um, Biomedical Communications, we can supply you with reverse logos if you need them um, so that you can use them on darker backgrounds and they will show up. You just, just need to um, contact us and ask us and we'll be happy to um, supply that to you. 
Okay, when it comes to sizing the logos, when you insert it into your poster, it's not likely to be the appropriate size to fit where you need it to fit. Uh, in order to resize it, make sure to hold down the control key and grab the logo from the corner. If not, you're going to stretch it all out of shape and uh, it's, you, can't, you can't put it back. Um, so be sure to hold down the control key, grab the logo from the corner, and then resize it. And here you can see examples. The two on the left are correctly sized. Uh, and uh, on the right hand side, you can see how they can get stretched or squished. Um, and that is not an appropriate way to display the logo. Okay, so let's look at some examples of some posters um, and see what you think. Uh, so first, uh, there is a lot going on in this, uh, in this poster. Um, First off, the background. Uh, that background image behind all of this is completely not necessary. Um, it's making this poster very, very busy. Uh, you can see that they've used dark blue uh, background in their text boxes and black uh, font, and that becomes very hard to read. Additionally, um, the logos are displayed on white boxes. Um, the, the logo that you see on the right-hand side is they call that the monogram logo, just the GW. You can use that uh, on a poster if you want to, but it has to be displayed along with another appropriate uh, logo, so either the school logo or the university's logo. Um, a few simple changes to that poster can make a huge difference. So here you can see I removed that background image and I have uh, fixed the, um, the logos. They're no longer now on a white box. Uh, and you can s and change the uh, I've changed the font size to white, and so you, it's much easier to read. And you can see now a, a pretty well organized, um, much much better looking poster that people will want to stop and look at. Um, this poster, um, first of all, I know you can't see it uh, because it's being projected here, but the image that they've used in the background, while it, it may look nice here, it's it was a very low resolution image, and so when it's printed on the poster, it was very, very digitized. Um, so um, the first thing to do would be to drop that uh, out of the background. If you did that um, and got rid of that background, first of all, you could make your text boxes bigger. You could also make your title banner uh, larger, so that if you look at the top there on the left where it says George Washington University School of Medicine, that should say the George Washington University School of Medicine and Health Sciences. Um, that is the full name of the school. So if they made the text box uh, at the top bigger with the title, uh, the title banner box, then they, you would have more room. You could make the logos a little bit smaller, um, and you could uh, have enough room to fit the names of the universities in there. And additionally, make your text boxes bigger, and so the whole poster would be a lot easier to read. Also, um, that logo that's there, the GW logo that's up there at the top in the title banner, uh, was grabbed off of the web, and that is going to display very badly because it's um, going to be web resolution. Um, this poster, you can see another illustration of what happens if you use black text on a dark background. It's very hard to read. They could have solved that problem by simply making that font white. And of course, this is a, a logo at the top that was completely um, fabricated. Um, so inappropriate to use on a poster. Okay, um, I think you can see right off the bat that the main issue with this poster is that there is so much information in it. It's going to take a long time to really read this poster um, and, uh, and get any information out of it. Um, so you consider that when you're creating your poster. Um, also, you can see an old GW logo in the top left. That logo was retired in 2012. So um, it's no longer in use. Please don't, don't use that logo if you see it. Also, one more thing about this poster um, at the top, you can see uh, they've simply put their first names, just their first names. Um, make sure you put your entire name in there. Uh, people want to know who you are. Um, it's much more professional. Okay, in this poster, um, they've used a gradated background. It goes from a lighter color to a darker color, and you can already see the problems that it creates. Um, the at the bottom, um, 
where you can see that they've used white font for on their captions much easier to read on that dark blue background and yet at the top um, where you see table one in the center um, that becomes much harder to read as white on that background this background is creating way too much uh, conflict so um, I would never recommend using a gradated background like that a plain background would be much better um, and you wouldn't have to worry about being able to read everything from top to bottom this is a pretty nice poster. This is an example of a, a really good poster. It has lots of really good high resolution images, um, not a lot of text uh, to read. The, um, the logos are properly displayed uh, in the, uh, the font in the text box is white, so it's easy to read. This is a very nice example of a very nice poster. Um, same problem here. Uh, the gradated background is very, very distracting. Um, with a simple change of background, this poster is a lot easier to, uh, to read. Okay, here's another example of a pretty nice poster. Um, they have, it's very well organized. Um, they have some very good high resolution images in here. Um, it's, you know, tells you what you need to know. You're not going to have to spend a whole lot of time on it. And, uh, and so this is, this is pretty well done. All right, we have a couple more here. Also a good example of a nice poster. Very well organized. You can see they've used bullet points um, to, uh, to make their point. Um, and uh, so it becomes very easy to read. They have lots of really good high resolution uh, imagery to show you um, to demonstrate what they've done in their research. Um, here's an example of not properly sizing images. And you can look at the logos and see that they are stretched. They are not the right shape. Um, and that comes from not holding down that control key and uh, grabbing it by the corner. Additionally, they've used a portrait, the George Portrait logo, uh, which is not for use on posters. And even in the images, you can see how they are either squished short or stretched, and the people in them look very, very stretchy. So um, that's a good example of uh, why you need to uh, properly resize the Im your images. Um, same here, uh, gradated background. Um, very hard to read with the white font on this background. Okay, so now we can talk about uh, Research Day. Um, this year it is April the 10th, and uh, here are some points. Um, students, if you're paying for your own posters and you're not being reimbursed by a department, um, then you can get a 10% early bird discount if you finish your poster early, uh, either a 3x4 or 4x4. Those are the sizes uh, that uh, are good for research day. Um, I can tell you that most people are going with 3x4s because 4x4 is an odd square size and it's quite a bit more expensive than doing a 3x4. So um, we recommend actually that you go with a 3x4. The deadline for you to turn in your posters uh, to get the student discount is March 29th. And the final deadline for printing with no rush charges is 4 p.m. on Friday, April the 5th. And that is the Friday before Research Day, uh, which is the following Wednesday on the 10th. Um, we will accept posters um, if we can handle it uh, on Monday and Tuesday, April 8th and 9th. Uh, there will be 50% rush charges at that point, um, but I would tell you right now that it's not likely that we would take a poster uh, that Monday and Tuesday. Uh, by Friday, usually the, the Friday before research day, uh, we are inundated with so many posters coming in at the last minute that we couldn't possibly handle the, we have one printer and we wouldn't be able to handle the volume and have it done for you in time. So don't wait till the last minute. Um, take advantage of that discount, get your poster in nice and early so that we can um, make sure we can get it printed for you. Um, you can email your posters to our email address, which is medphoto at gwu.edu. We'd like you to attach both the PowerPoint file and a PDF. We use that PDF to compare and make sure that uh, what we see in your PowerPoint file is what it is actually supposed to look like. Um, different versions of PowerPoint can change. Uh, a lot of things can move around um, when opened on a different computer. So we like to make sure that we print your poster um, properly. Um, we're going to reply to you that we've received your poster, and then we'll contact you when it's ready for pickup. 
You can pay either with a Visa or MasterCard when you pick it up, or if it's being covered by your department, you'll need to provide us a banner code for billing uh, when you send your poster to us. If you are billing to an MFA cost center, uh, we have to receive an approval from the department's authorized signer before we can print your poster. So make sure that you go about finding out who your department's authorized signer is and asking them for the approval um, to be sent to us before you send us your poster. Here's the pricing for Research Day. So um, a 3x4 poster is 84 You can see it's um, $11 more, $95 for a 4x4. Four four. Uh, with the student discount, uh, that 3x4 goes from 84 down to $75.60. Uh, and of course, remember that that student discount period ends March 29th. Um, and then you can see here uh, what a 3x4 would cost with rush fees. It goes way up to $126. So get your poster to us early. Um, if you want to contact us, if you have questions, if we can help you further, um, here's our contact information, our email address, um, our phone number, and then there's also a link um, to where you can see this presentation and get some other information from our website at smhs.gw.edu slash posters. So thank you for listening. Uh, I hope I've been helpful. And again, if we can help you at all, uh, please do come by. Um, and see us or send us an email or uh, give us a call. Thank you.